From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. It's an infrastructure bill that Senator John Tester is heralding as one in a century, and now it's on its way to the U.S. House. I'm Cody Boyer in Bozeman with how it might impact here coming up. And Montana businesses along the border with Canada say they are still suffering due to the continuing border closure coming up. See how it's affecting jobs and livelihoods. The time it is 6.30 on this Thursday. A little cloud cover in the Gallatin Valley. That flag hanging limp though. No breeze to speak of. Yeah, least. not a ton of wind. And no. uh, makes for a perfect situation with the moisture, the cooler temperatures, mm -hmm. light wind. It's all a perfect recipe to see some fog in oh, parts yeah, of the yeah. area. So um, beware of that there as we continue to see some light rain uh, falling across the area. Uh, cooler temperatures, we're talking 40s for most of us. Pretty uniform. 46 in West Yellowstone, 48 in Belgrade, 40 46 in Butte, a little bit of light rain showing up on radar. Remember, we don't get a lot of low-level coverage, so this may be a little bit more all-encompassing here in southwest Montana than what the radar shows. Uh, models picking up on some of that rain. I don't think it'll last real long by the noon hour, mainly overcast with some clearing skies off to the west out toward uh, Wise River. Uh, even Butte may see some rays of sunshine. Temperatures remain chilly with highs into the 60s today. Maybe a little drippy again by the afternoon. We'll talk about whether you need to pack that umbrella coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. 631. Now, last week, an infrastructure bill being hailed as a once-in-a-generation bill would bring trillions of dollars to aging systems across the country past the Senate. Montana U.S. Senator John Tester was on the bipartisan team that created it. Now, MTN's Cody Boyer spoke with the senator, so he stopped in Bozeman and learned how the new measure will affect Gallatin County. In Washington, D.C., they're calling it the Infrastructure Investments and Jobs Act for a reason. And according to Senator John Tester, who made a stop here at the Bozeman City Hall, he says it hits on all of those factors. And if that bill is signed by the president, it could bring $2.8 billion in Montana, including here, to Bozeman. Democrats and Republicans literally sat down on an eight-foot-long table uh, and argued and fought and agreed and, and got something done. That something done is part of a $1.2 trillion infrastructure package aimed to cover everything from highways, bridges, sewers, and airports, even broadband internet in hard-to-cover areas. Senator Tester was joined by Bozeman Mayor Cindy Andrus, City Manager Jeff Mihalik, and Deputy Director of Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport Scott Humphrey to go over the impact this would have at home. This legislation creates jobs, not only the jobs that will be created putting this infrastructure in the ground, uh, but also jobs that future generations will be able to take advantage of. And the mayor points to another local problem that could see some benefit from the bill, affordable housing. It's a huge issue, and these funds will be able to help us build new roads and provide infrastructure which will encourage new housing uh, development. Again, if the bill survives the House and is signed by President Biden, Montana would get roughly $2.8 billion. $1 billion would go to rural water systems. $144 $4 million would go to airports around the state. 21.7 million of that dedicated specifically for one of the fastest growing airports in the country, Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport, who announced they could be having another terminal expansion. We'll board more passengers this summer, June, July, and August, than we did the entire calendar year of 2011. Tester says he and a team of five Republicans and four other Democrats devised the bill, which passed 69 to 30 in the Senate. On the other hand, Republican Senator Steve Daines criticized and voted no on the bill, citing the Congressional Budget Office, saying the bill would add more than $250 billion in debt over the next 10 years. Tester says this is not the case. This bill is fully, fully paid for. This does not add to the debt. One penny. In Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. 634 and other business news. Montana Governor Greg Gianforte getting a better understanding of the impact of the U.S.'s continued closure of the Canadian border and the impact it's having on the High Line. MTN's Coulter Anstat was with the governor as he visited a business in Shelby and has our report. Wednesday morning, Governor Greg Gianforte spent some time here at Mark's Tire in Shelby talking with the owner about the impact the closure of the Canadian border is having both on the business and on Shelby as a whole. As you can probably imagine, both the owner and the governor are pleading with the Biden administration to reopen the Canadian border. So we have three basic bays 
Shannon McAllister was not shy Wednesday about discussing the impact the closure of the U.S.-Canada border is having on his tire shop. Canadian borders cost us probably around 20% is what we're estimating it at. When your local stuff kind of slows down, the Canadians kind of, it always seemed like they always picked up the slack when we needed it. If we were down here, they, they were up and they, they'd come down and, and buy. Not having Canadian business also means McAllister wasn't able to hire his usual extra summer help, including high schoolers, because he didn't see the need. I like to always get a younger one that would, could work for me for three or four years, you know. Um, it was good experience for them. I always worked with their schedules, you know. I enjoyed getting to know those kids, you know. You can follow them through college and everything else. So yeah, that's kind of frustrating. Before taking a tour of the tire shop, McAllister and Governor Greg Gianforte spent time talking about the impact as well as the impact on the rest of Shelby. So if you think about Shelby, what kind of businesses have been impacted by the border being closed? So I would say the biggest ones are uh, our hotels, our golf course especially. Gianforte says there's no reason the border should still be closed. I signed a joint letter with the Premier from Alberta and Saskatchewan along with some western governors. Uh, we can safely reopen this border and we need to so that we can get back to normal. The governor also pointed out that while the U.S.'s northern border remains closed, the U.S.'s southern border is open. It's just so ironic that our southern border is open, but our northern border is closed. That's why I'm continuing to put the, uh, the, the, our foot to the pedal in, in, and really encourage the Biden administration to take the steps to safely reopen this northern border for the benefit of all Montanans. To learn more about the impact the continued closure of the border is having on Montana's economy, check out this story on our website. In Shelby, Colter Anstad, MTN News. 636 now. It started as a trial among just a handful of police departments, now a national movement to have mental health crisis workers respond to many police calls is growing. It saw a big increase when some saw it as part of a defund the police movement, but departments and mental health workers don't see it that way. Dan Grossman looks at how this change in response is working. <music> Block of With every new detail heard through the scanner, 1300 block of highway. comes an immediate assessment from those responding. A male party, 38 years of age, suicidal ideation. For any call that involves the possibility of danger. You don't know what the person's intentions are and whether they're just interested in harming themselves or somebody else. That assessment comes from civilians like Kathy Evans. We try to focus on calls that may have a mental health component that don't seem to have that mental health component right away. Since 2018, she has sat shotgun with police officers three days a week as a co-responder that works for the Mental Health Center of Denver, inserting herself into every situation as much as they do. What was your first day on the job like? Uh, actually, my first day of the job, I had a person who was trying to jump off a building. It definitely pushed me into feeling much more comfortable with the kind of work that I would be doing moving forward. That year, in 2018, co-responders like Kathy responded with police to more than 1,700 calls in the city. And according to police, less than 70 of them resulted in a citation or arrest. 7.4% of our calls for service have some sort of mental health nexus. Paul Pazin is Denver's police chief and has worked with other cities to introduce similar programs. In June, New York launched its Be Heard program, which is modeled after Denver's. During the first month of service, NYPD reported that 95% of people accepted care from Be Heard teams compared to 82% from traditional law enforcement. And only 50% of people were transported to the hospital compared to 82% with traditional 911 response. Often they, you know, folks will, will come in and, and they're a little bit cautious about what this is. From my perspective, from my experience, from what we are doing, this is not uh, defund the police in any way. This is all about better outcomes. Those better outcomes have led to more acceptance. Cities in Minnesota, Oregon, California, Georgia, and Montana have all started similar programs. And in Denver, they're taking it a step further. Next year, outreach specialists will join the department, following up with people who receive care to make sure they get the help and support they need. We have uh, helped young people get jobs. We've helped connect veterans to the uh, VA clinic. We've helped connect people to, to housing uh, because those were what the, the issue uh, was. How long do you think you want to 
keep doing this for? As long as possible. For Kathy, it's a no-brainer. When Denver started the program in 2016, there were four co-responders on staff. Now there are 25 with seven more to onboard in the coming months. They can be really escalated and just having someone who's de-escalated and able to kind of ground them makes a big difference. A lesson in assessment of how police can better serve those they have sworn to protect. I'm Dan Grossman. Six forty. time for a quick break here on Montana this morning when we come back. The return of COVID, it might sound like a Hollywood movie title. Coming up, see how the real world rise of the Delta variant causing movie schedules to slip and productions to be delayed. But first, let's check in with our friends at CBS This Morning. Good morning to you ahead on CBS This Morning. We'll talk to the CDC director about COVID booster shots and what we can expect from the rollout. Plus our exclusive interview with Facebook CEO, that's Mark Zuckerberg, why he says social media is not the main reason for vaccine hesitancy. Plus, how he wants to use virtual reality to revolutionize the way we work. He's got some ideas on that. And first on CBS This Morning, we always like when that happens, writer, actor, and producer. There she is, Mindy Kaling, joins us to reveal her new partnership, Aiming to Help Women. Mindy's got ideas about that, too. We'll see you at 7 o'clock, straight up.